Moin! In this video I show how I electroplate flexible or articulated 3D prints or at least I try to. Along the way I also show, once again, how to get everything nice and smooth. And what kind of mistakes can happen? What could possibly go wrong? Enough talk, now it's time to... Let's start with the resin printer. Don't worry, the FDM printer will come into play soon too. First, I'm printing chainmail on the machine. Willow Creative sent me a high resolution print in place STL model a while ago and I'm glad I finally get to try it out. The advantage of chainmail is that you can print hundreds of interlinked rings all at once and then simply pull it off the print bed. I always print with a high gray offset and anti-aliasing that already gets rid of a lot of surface artifacts. A quick clean and then it goes straight into the curing station. Here are three of them. Let's pick up the pace a bit. <laughs> the individual rings are already super smooth, but unfortunately the support marks are still there. Luckily I just recently stocked up all the polishing media for my rotary tumbler. The hope now is that I can just grind those marks away. So, chainmail goes into the barrel, at the coarse polishing media, a bit of water and off we go. 16 hours in the tumbler. Meanwhile, let's fire up the FDM printer. Today it gets to melt something a bit more exotic. Ready to get started, buddy? Doesn't matter, you're doing it anyway. What it doesn't know, I'm printing with PVB. This material can be smoothed with idle propanol. If I printed the Flexi Dragon in PVA instead, it would later dissolve into its basic parts in my electrolyte bath. So this polisher thing, I bought it years ago. Don't use it all that often, but honestly, it's kind of perfect for what I'm doing here. For prints with a more organic look, it does the job just fine. It's a wild little machine. Lights <laughs> blinking everywhere and the motor is either totally overwhelmed or just messing with me. Once it finally opens up, you can pour some isopropanol into the reservoir down there. Or you know way too much. So. Then the print goes in the middle, the alcohol gets vaporized and the dragon gets nice and smooth. And yeah, first it has to actually close again. Good luck with that. Cool, the dragon is super smooth now. But why does everything always need to be so smooth and even? Well, when I code it, the surface underneath gets visually amplified by the metal. Every tiny bump and every print layer becomes super visible. Which brings us straight to the next step, electroplating or to be more exact, electroforming. To do that, I first need to coat the 3D prints with a conductive paint. It just won't work without it. But before any of that, I protect myself from all the fumes and particles floating around. I always work in a well-ventilated area, plus I use the respirator, gloves and goggles. And you should too. Alright, so I use two types of conductive paint, copper conductive paint and graphite paint. Both work well, but the copper one goes on more evenly and has better conductivity. The graphite paint on the other hand is super durable, but after spraying it needs a little extra work to make it really conductive. I'll get to that in a bit. Also with the right kind of graphite you can actually make tons of it yourself for super cheap. The tricky part with flexible prints is making sure all the little segments are conductive and that they are all touching in the plating bath so the current can flow through everything. To spray the paint I use two dedicated cheap airbrushes. First up I coat the chainmail with the copper conductive paint. That one's a challenge because there's a lot of surface area hidden underneath the overlapping parts. So you have to keep rotating it constantly to hit every spot. The Flexi Dragon was actually way easier in comparison. Just a heads up though, that copper paint is pretty delicate, so handle with care. 
Now check this out. Here we've got a hopefully evenly coated chainmail. And if it's not conductive yet, don't worry, once it hits the electrolyte, it will be. The graphite coated chainmail still has a bit too much resistance though. You can fix that by polishing it. First, I wipe off all the loose graphite with a paper towel. Then I go over it with a microfiber cloth to really shine it up. And surprise, still not conductive enough. Ideally, you want the resistance to be under one kilo ohms. I got an idea. Time to bust out the tumbler again and fill it with some coarse walnut shell media. That might give the surface a nice long polish. So in goes the media, toss in the chainmail, maybe a bit more, close it up and off we go. Let the wild ride begin. I took it out after about three hours and measured the resistance across roughly two to three centimeters. That might actually work. Now I'm setting up my electroplating bath. I'm using a container that's big enough. This one here holds 15 liters. Lately, I've been installing a magnetic steerer at the bottom. It really helps improve the metal deposition and gives better results overall. Next up, I pour in 15 liters of bright copper electrolyte. And yep, I'm using a commercial electrolyte I bought. Always dispose any leftovers properly. The great thing is, if you take good care of the electrolyte, you can reuse it over and over again. And if you want to add different metal as a decorative top layer later on, you can just plate that right on top of the copper. For electroplating, I need a power supply or more specifically a rectifier. This one here delivers 5 amps. To figure out how much current I actually need, a viewer sent me a homemade online calculator. Super handy. You just load in the SDL, set the layer thickness and the amps per square decimeter and it calculates the target current for you. I'll drop the link in the description. Turns out I need a bigger power supply. This one here does 30 amps, which should be more than enough. Next up, copper anodes. I'll need at least 8 decimeters of surface area. Luckily, I've still got some from my larger tank, so I just cut a few down to some. These go in on the left and the right side of the bath. And I figured I wouldn't need any polypropylene bags. Yeah, bad idea, you'll see. Now I'm using my rotary jig to hold the print. It was a bit too short for this tank, so I printed some adapters. Works just fine now. Since the print is flexible, I need to secure it somehow and also run a few wires through it to make sure the plating is nice and even. I'm using copper wires for that. So I bundle everything up, hook it up to the negative pole and into the bath it goes. Power on and go! This time I'm not using the rotation function because the moving print would get too close to the anodes. So you'd think everything would get plated together after a short time, but nope, not really. I took it out three times and moved it around a bit to loosen up some of the connections between the segments. Then I figured it would be smart to turn on the stirrer. Yeah, that backfired. The deposits on the anodes broke loose and messed up the whole bath. Super fail. I need the electrolyte to be as clean as possible. So pumped everything out, filtered it and quickly whipped up some filters to match the size of the anodes. Once I had everything back under control, I continued the process. And in the end, I actually got a nice evenly coated 3D print out of it. Whew. Now it's time for the Flexi Dragon and honestly, this one gave me zero problems. I just secured it somehow, let it rotate and plated it for four hours. At 5 amps, it got a really nice copper layer and the flexible parts didn't fuse together either. That was the hardest part done and these things already look seriously awesome. They also feel super solid. No surprise, there's quite a bit of mass added during plating. Check this out. My little scale shows the resin print at just under 30 grams, while the plated versions weighs in at 82 grams. Crazy, right? You can hear the difference too. Also massive are the incredible people who are channel members and support my work. Thank you so much. Now I wanted to add another metal layer, this time using palladium electrolyte. That usually works pretty well for me. 
I typically use a galvanic brush for this kind of plating, but the challenge here is that everything is articulated. So I 3D printed a little base plate to hold the chainmail and connected it to the metal plate for better contact. Then I started applying the palladium, but yeah, didn't quite go as planned. The deposition was way too slow and I couldn't reach into the deeper sections at all. So back to the nickel bath once again. One day I get myself a safer palladium setup because even though the nickel bath works reliably, I still have a lot of respect for how toxic it is. All right, let's take a look at what we actually made. What do you think? Was this a good idea? And was it even worth all the effort? These chainmail pieces are seriously cool, but now the big question is how do I actually connect them? Also, another good question, if I can 3D print any shape, why am I printing boring rings instead of something more exciting? Exactly, and I think that's the real power of this process. The dragon? Definitely awesome, but yeah, a ton of work. But hey, this channel is all about fun. I don't sell anything I make, I just do this as a hobby because I wanted to figure out how to make convincing props. If you want to support this channel, go ahead and drop a like, leave a comment and share the video. It really helps. Thanks for hanging out. See you next time. Tschüss.